like for your recovery for all levels of, of the body, right? And, and we have the main areas that we focus on. So we have proteins, and I want you to think about when we start talking about food and where they're gonna fit in your day, protein is what helps fuel your muscles while you're working out, and it's what fuels recovery. So I want you guys to think about three to five servings a day, um, which is like a deck of cards of, of protein. That would be like two eggs, four slices of deli meat, a cup of yogurt, six ounces of chicken breast. Like that's what we're thinking about when we're thinking about protein. Now, if any, is anybody in here a vegetarian? Oh, then I don't have to have the hard questions because vegetarian is always a hard question. Are you? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 no, it's just a little different, right? Like I'm not a vegetarian, so I, I, I have a lot of athletes and friends who have fueled all their, yeah, with vegetarian. I just, it wasn't, it's not my expertise, but I know. Um, so, and then carbohydrates. And one of the things that I think is interesting about carbohydrates, carbohydrates get a really bad rap for some people. Like, oh my gosh, I need to not eat carbs because I don't want to, I want to be lean. I want to be strong. I need, I need like, and I want to have muscle definition or especially like, I'm going to touch on, you know, especially girls too. I'm talking about girls and boys that are different. Um, we all need carbs, carbs are not just a white bagel and white pasta and rice and like that's like there's really good other carbs too um you know that that you need to get because that fuels your energy right so your carbs are going to be the things that like get into your body and your glycogen stores and they're going to be the things that really fuel your 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 workouts in your body but you don't have to carb load like it's not like the I, I remember in college, like eating in my taper, like, oh my gosh, I need to eat more pasta. And sitting down like the week of my taper and just like eating bowls of pasta. And, the, and that was not a good taper that year because I learned that I just bulked up, like I lost muscle because I wasn't training and I just bulked up and I was sluggish. So kind of lesson learned, you don't need huge bowls of pasta um, for carb loading, you, you need a balance. Um, and then fruits and vegetables promote overall wellness give you vitamins and minerals, contribute to your bone and muscle health, um, enjoy as many fruits and vegetables as you want. Some people are very like, ah, oh, fruit, it's got a lot of sugar in it. it. You guys, it's good sugar. Like, I'm okay. Like, you guys eat an apple and a banana and like, fruit's fine. Like, <laughs> um, and then healthy fats. I think it's one thing that is really, uh, amongst especially kids, teenagers, young adults, almost college kids, right? That you don't really think about, right? Like, well, what do help fat's bad? We shouldn't have fat. No, I mean like peanut butter, almond butter, avocados, you know, olive oil, those fats are really good for you. And those are the things that also make you feel full and satisfied. So if you sit down and you go and I'm gonna eat some popcorn and some Triscuits and some oatmeal and a banana, and then you're like, why am I so hungry like a half an hour later? Well, there's no healthy fats in here. There's no protein in here. So you just consumed a lot of calories. They aren't bad calories because you guys need calories, right? That's the other thing I want to get clear to everybody here. Calories are not bad. Calories are good. Calories are energy. It's just calories are different depending on what it is that you're putting in your body, okay? So <clears throat> that's healthy fats. Like, Learn to like avocados. Learn to like nuts. Like we do bags of, um, of trail mix nuts. Um, so those are good. <clears throat> and also just, we just eat straight peanut butter. I mean, these are great straight almond butter. These are awesome to take to swim meats, to lunch, to eat. And, I mean, like this is, now, now this combination, right? With, smoke, like this is a great combination because you've got, you know, you've got your power, your protein oats, your fruit and you've got fat and protein okay so and then the water like water should be your main source of hydration water like you should not be walking you guys the one thing that i think we forget as swimmers is that you walk, even though it was really cold this morning <laughs> right and last night when you guys got all in the pool because i had a coat on and my uggs and you guys were all getting in the pool and i was like it's cold out here you're still sweating you're still sweating, you're still losing that hydration, and hydration is so important for performance. Um, and so one of the things when we think about just nutrition in general, 
And I think it's a good analogy that you guys can kind of get behind, right? So you guys come to practice every day. Coach Witt, he works you very hard. And is your goal to be a Honda? Which I mean, I drive Hondas, so Hondas aren't bad, right? Or is your goal to be this, a Lamborghini? I mean, what do you guys want to be? Right, so do we put, what kind of fuel do we put in a Lamborghini? <laughs> premium, high, premium, expensive, at like premium gasoline, right? And we put, we just put regular in Honda. There's nothing wrong with being the regular Honda, right? And you can keep going as the regular Honda, and sometimes you might be able to like keep up for a second, or you might pass them because there's another car in front of them. But you know, the the point is, is that if you want to perform like the Lamborghini or the Porsche, you guys have got to start thinking about the fuel that you're putting into your body. Okay. So with that, that's where you really have to think about um, the choices that you make, right? So the Big meats, right? Joseph, this weekend I would imagine you're wearing a tech suit. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> and, and how much do we expect tech suits to, I mean, very expensive tech suits, to, they will shave time off of your meat, right? Like, hopefully, they'll be just that extra thing you need, especially in the 53. Um, but imagine if you could shave off, like, more time than just a tech suit. At a, like, I mean, you guys can do that just by changing your diet right now for the rest of the season. Like that will make you faster, not because it's going to make you sprint faster on that day, but it's going to teach your body how to recover. So that means that every single one of your training sessions, every day that you go in, you have to think of, I am fueling my body for performance, right? Like I want to get faster. The way I'm going to get faster is if I make this a life habit, if I make it part of my life and I do it every day and it builds on each other. And then you're practicing harder, you're recovering better. The next day you're practicing harder, you're recovering harder, practicing harder, recovering harder, better. And then the meat comes and you're swimming faster because you were able to improve so much because of the way you practice. That's kind of how nutrition plays. You're not gonna see a overnight change, but what we will see is when you start making a change, you'll see how awful bad nutrition can make you feel. So I'm gonna give an example on what, what you guys need to not do this week. Okay, and then I'm going to go into a little details. Um, and I'm going to give an example of actually one of my kids as a swimmer and one of a, a mistake he made last year and I let him make because I wasn't thinking about it, right, as a parent. So um, the, like sodium, like bad sodium, eating pizza, for example, <laughs> right? So last year, my son was going to get a cut time in his mile and he was, they were driving to Austin. It was a Friday meet. He wasn't coming with the team. I wasn't really thinking about fueling him. You know, he was, he was going for a cut time and um, he had pizza the night before. Like, and then he woke up that morning and we just, we just weren't paying attention to him, right? Like we weren't treating it as a, as a big meet, even though he was actually going for a best time in his mile, right? So he went in and he swam the mile and he, he did so good, right? He actually swam fantastic. He crushed it. He got he got his goal time. But like within seconds of the 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 he would have swam faster, but within seconds of the meet being over, he started cramping up everywhere. Ben is only 13. Like, so he barely even has muscle. Like <laughs> and <laughs> so like he and he cramped so bad that he couldn't even walk home. He had such a stomach ache and he couldn't move. And it was, I feel like I failed him as a mom, as you know, a nutrition coach, because I let him eat pizza the night before. Like I know better, but it sounded good. I was like, whatever, stop whining. We'll get pizza. We're in a hurry. Right. <laughs> and in the next day, it was just really good. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like a meet of this weekend where you, you swim a distance of end on Friday night. And then on Saturday you're swimming again. Cause it would, I mean, would have never have been able to swim the rest of the weekend. So, like, that's an example of where bad nutrition, you really can feel it. Um, okay. So, I'm going to go over the few other basics before we start really, oh, did it stop? Oh, no, sorry. And now everybody's going to see my messages, too. There we go. I talked for too long on that slide. I went to sleep. Okay. 
So this is on Eat Well to Swim Fast, so the blue document. And so you guys can kind of follow along. But the question always comes, what should I eat before practice? I'm going to get into what should I eat before a meet next. But what should I eat before practice? So most of you guys are swimming twice a day. So you guys are swimming morning practice. Morning practice is always that hard, what do I eat? Right? Like, I'm getting up and I mean literally putting my feet on the ground and walking out the door and I'm not sitting down and eating the breakfast. I just need to get out the door. So the, the, the ideal is that you eat a big meal one to two hours before your training session. Well, that's not going to happen in the morning, right? Um, so what, and, and what you can read in here is the same thing with meat nutrition. It's what you eat the night before. So it's what you're eating the night before for dinner that's fueling your morning workouts. Like, you're not going to starve to death in the morning through practice, even if you didn't eat anything. Like, I do full workouts fasted. Your body does get used to it. I'm not recommending that. But what you're eating in the car or as you're walking out the door to swim practice in the morning is to just get your metabolism going and something that you can stomach, right? If it's a bagel with cream cheese, that might be too much. Like, I couldn't eat very much before going to swim practice. Um, I could usually do maybe a half of English muffin with a little peanut butter. That was kind of what I could do. But, you know, there's certain things, maybe a gorilla bar. Like, that's just really so that you're not swimming in the water going, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry, I can't do this then. Because you don't want that either. Coach Mike doesn't want that. Um, <laughs> so in the mornings, that's your strategy. So when you're eating at night, so when you leave here at night at 7.15 and all of you drivers are like, oh, I'm just going to swing by whatever, or I'm just going to swing by Chick-fil-A, I'm just going to swing by wherever. And even parents, like, of trying to make it easy, I have moved back to the United States after being out of the country for five years, and I'm like, so, it's so easy to not cook dinner, right? So we, on another session, I need to teach the parents, too, who are doing the cooking on how to make life easier, too, so that you guys have the food. And then the answer just is no. Don't stop. You guys need to be the ones who say, I'm not going to stop for that food, fast food because, one, that's not the recovery food I need for this workout. And the recovery food that I have after this workout is what's going to fuel my workout tomorrow morning. Okay? Um, and that kind of goes along with what should I eat after practice. So in the morning and at night, eat, it doesn't even have to be your breakfast. And it doesn't even have to be your dinner. It is your most important meal of the day, period. The 30 minutes to 45 minutes after you get out of your workout, it is the most important meal of the day. It is almost like your workout wasn't even worth having if you do not consume a protein and a complex carb within 30 to 45 minutes after you get out of the pool. Like, I actually done research in, in all of my training that I know athletes that if they don't have their recovery meal with them, they won't work out because if you don't have that fuel to put into your body, basically when you're working out, you're like breaking down all the little muscle fibers in your body and you're, you're I mean, swimming is all about just like tearing yourself apart and then to taper and build yourself up and swim faster, right? Like, I mean, that's kind of the, <laughs> the, the short of it. But so you come in the water and you tear yourself down and you get out and you go to school and you don't eat till lunch, right? Or you get out and you run to Dunkin' Donuts. And, like, why did you go to practice? Like, if you're going to put the effort in to go to practice, put the effort in to have a protein shake in your bag. And, I, and I'll talk a little bit about that, too, because of the age of everybody, um, some recommendations. Or literally, like, I used to get up in the morning, and when we start talking about food ideas, this might sound gross, okay? So I used to get up in the morning, and I would train an hour and a half to two hours, um, and I would have a bowl of sweet potatoes and chicken, right? Just literally cold sweet potatoes and chicken mixed up with cinnamon because then it kind of tasted like breakfast food. <laughs> and I would, <laughs> I would, half the time I wouldn't heat it up. I would like get in from my well, two hour workout. I would walk in, I would grab it and I would drink water and I would like force it down. Like it, it was not about eating for enjoyment. And, and there's a time to eat for enjoyment. So don't get me wrong, I'm gonna talk about that too. But if you're gonna do all that work in the pool, like it's not like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have my donut. Like that's not the purpose then. Like, so start thinking about, you know, the different foods that you can have after practice, 
right? So this is where I said chicken breast and sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes are also really good with peanut butter on them. Like, I will eat a cold sweet potato with almond butter on it and eat it like a piece of toast. Again, strange. People think I've been strange. But I had really good success by being strange because I was putting the right food in my body. Um, okay. So those are ideas. Also, you don't have to be that crazy. You can have a hard-boiled egg and a banana. Like, those are easy. You know, people are like, oh, I need fast food. Like, it's amazing. Like, these, they have their own wrapper on them. You don't even have to do anything to them, right? Same thing with hard-boiled eggs. You, can, you don't, if, if they're hard-boiled in the show, they're in their own wrapper. So it's not hard to grab these things out of your house if they're in your house, okay? Um, <coughs> and what should you drink? I'm going to go a little bit into this, but not too much into it, and you guys can all ask your questions about sports drinks and energy drinks and performance drink, pre-workout drinks and all that. Um, every trainer, every nutrition person, every coach, they all have their own philosophy. My biggest recommendation is drink water. I don't really feel like you need anything except, except water. Right? You, if you don't like the taste of water, things that you can do, you can take water and you can put a little bit of just a splash of orange juice in it before you go, or a splash of apple juice. Um, and then the other things that are out there, I don't like Gatorade. However, you're going to probably see my kid walking around with a bottle of Gatorade because I can't get to drink anything else. So I fail sometimes too, so parents, um, it's okay. We try. <laughs> it's better than not drinking for a day. Um, but some of the products that I like, I really like um, these tablets, which are none. You can get, so most of this stuff, I actually did a, a delivery from Target today because I didn't have most of this at home. Like, and I needed it for the meet this weekend. So I literally clicked on Target and did a delivery and bought 95% of what's sitting here from this Target, okay? So none, which is an electrolyte drink and very low sugar. Um, I try to have, I recommend staying away from artificial sweeteners which means sucralose, aspartame. I'm okay with natural sweeteners, which are um, stevia and monk fruit are examples. Um, so these you just put in your water bottle. And I mean, it just flavors your water a little bit. Doesn't, it's not like you're drinking a sweet Gatorade. Um, the other, another company that I like, they have these at Target. These are called Scratch. Um, and um, I like these because there is sugar, but it's natural sugar. So there, and I, and I like the, um, the hydrate and the fuel aspect of these. Um, Liquid IV is another one that I read. It's newer that I like, but it's very expensive. Um, and so, but if, if it's something you do like, because I know you guys said that's really expensive, Costco does have it. So Costco does sell it cheaper. Um, coconut water is another really good natural one. So if you want, if you can learn to like coconut water, you can go half coconut water, half water. Um, and so these are both, this has artificial sweetener in it, it has um, aspartame in it, or sucralose in it. Um, again, like finding the balance, like it's not my favorite, but my kids will drink it, so sometimes we do this. Um, this one does not have, I'm trying to figure out what the sweetener is. This one does not have an artificial sweetener in it. So um, this one is, we're, we're trying this out in the house recently that one's a better option. Um, that one goes over here. So those are that. Chocolate milk's always a good option. I really like vegan. There's some really good, HEB has some good, um, we're talking about calories now though. I can go back to that. That's a protein shake. Same thing <laughs> with chocolate milk. Um, now, I know all of the kids, this is not a, this is not, this is an alternative to something bad, right? So Izzy is a natural soda, so it doesn't have all the high fructose corn syrup, it doesn't have all the bad ingredients of a Sprite or a Coke or whatever. So I know that sometimes you guys want to have a soda or something bubbly. I like LaCroix, but this actually tastes like soda. So like, tastes like soda, it gives you that. And this is not before practice, this is not after me. I mean, after practice, this is for when you're hanging out on the weekends and you know, you don't want to do the soda, okay? Um, <clears throat> any questions on that so far? Okay. Um, and then what about sleep? So I also have high school kids and and I feel like none of you guys sleep. Like at all. It kills me. But, you know, and I you have I know this sounds crazy. You have got to get eight hours of sleep, especially leading up to a big meet. 
Like, that sounds crazy because you have to get up for practice. But when I was really training hard, like, I made a rule to myself. My husband and I both were training for Ironman, and we had small kids, and we said, if we don't have eight hours of sleep, we're not allowed to train the next day. Like, and that was, I mean, so we were like, 8.45, I mean, I know that doesn't, that's really hard for you guys, right? So eight might be hard, but five and four, that you guys are all getting homework due at midnight. It happens in my house all the time. Homework due at midnight, waking up at 5.30 is not enough for your bodies to recover. I notice a huge difference when I go out for a run in the morning if I've had five hours of sleep compared to if I've had seven plus hours of sleep and I, and I ate a good meal the night before. You will notice a difference. Um, okay. So this is what I'm really here to talk about and I touched on all the big things. So now we can kind of just talk about how, what you guys are gonna do this weekend, okay? <clears throat> That's not showing up. There we go. <coughs> so how many people are swimming distance events Friday night? Awesome. Um, okay, so for you guys, your meet starts Friday. Actually, all of you guys start on, who, who's swimming the high school meet on Friday morning? Okay, so a lot of you guys have a, a full three-day meet. So that means Thursday night is your first pre-meet dinner, okay? And that means that it needs to be a big, healthy meal. So our typical, I am not afraid of red meat. So I'm all for steak, having a lean steak, having chicken breasts, having salmon. Like, so our, our standard meat dinner is the kids get one of those proteins, they get vegetables, you know, and a big serving of vegetables, you know, at least I try. And we usually do sweet potatoes or regular potatoes. Um, and then a big cup of fruit. And that's what they have the night before. I push a lot of fluids the night before. Um, so that is where you're starting to think Thursday night, parents, it's going to be a crazy week. We're going into a three day weekend. You know, we don't have time. What are we going to have for dinner on Thursday? Like start thinking about it now. Kids go home and say, Hey, we need to start thinking about this now. I started thinking about it yesterday for my kids because I was like, I have a lot going on this week and my husband's out of the country right now. So I need to make sure that I get the right food out. And, um, and I can send some ideas, like tonight, I, I have a big thing of chili being made in the Instant Pot with a whole bunch of vegetables in it, and Ben likes it, so that's what he's eating the rest of the week. And it's okay to, for them to eat the same thing every night. It's okay to only make dinner twice and eat, <coughs> eat two dinners the whole week. Like, it's okay. We're talking about buying the premium gasoline. There's only one kind of gasoline. So if you eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch, and dinner three or four times the, in the week, it's okay. Like you save those like the good things for that Sunday night when the meat's done. And then you want to have something that you've been craving all week. But you'll learn that you don't crave the potato chips anymore. You don't crave the donuts. You don't crave the cookies. You don't actually want that because you're feeling so good than what you're doing right now. Um, and then race day breakfast. So I would like to hear from some of you, because I've been talking a lot. Who eats a big breakfast on the morning of a meet? One person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and is everybody just afraid to eat? Yeah, yeah. They don't want to wake up early enough? That maybe? Afraid that you're not going to feel good? Yes. You don't want to throw up? Right? Yes. Right. I mean, so but think about it. Like, think, it, it's, first of all, it's different than a practice. It's, you're not like, <laughs> getting up, walking out the drawer, and like nine minutes later diving in for your warm up where your main set starts 30 minutes later, right? Like that's not what's happening on meet day. So you guys have to really like disconnect what your meet morning breakfast is and your practice morning breakfast is. Because first of all, the needs are very different. The demand on your body is different. One of them needs actually more fuel, but I, which is practice, not the meat, but it's a different kind of fuel, okay? So like literally like if you're not swimming for like hours, you get your breakfast can be a two full two hours before your first event. That's a long time to digest a full meal. Okay? So my recommendation is get up at enough time. So what warm-up starts <coughs> door gates open at seven on Saturday? 
In the morning, okay. So gates open at seven, okay. I, I don't think anybody's really just working, waking up at 6.30. Right? If you're waking up at just 6.30, and it's okay though, because the meat doesn't start till 8.30. So let's say you're really not even eating until 6.30. You have two full hours. And I don't think that coach kills you guys that hard in warm up that you're gonna throw up your breakfast in warm up. Right? So you have two full hours at minimum to digest your food. Super important. I mean, I recommend waking up, I mean, and everybody's different, but like bagel and cream cheese, bacon, eggs, fruits. I mean, my kids do it all. I mean, it's the, because they have a very hard time eating during the meat. So they need to get that fuel in to last them for as long as they can. They've got two full hours to digest it. Just keep remem remembering that. It's not like practice. Okay, so first thing I want you guys to do this weekend that's different is actually do it Friday morning. Do it for the high school meet for you high school swimmers. It, you have, it's a little less to lose. You're not trying to make finals. Most of you guys here in this group already have your times on your high school teams. If you feel a little uh, or sluggish in the morning, I don't think you will, but that's a really good time to test it. And then, it, then you're going to be like, it works. And then you can do it on Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, really important. It's something that I've seen swimmer. I did it too. Like, and I see such a difference out of their um, performance once you you start eating breakfast, okay? Really and quickly, I mentioned to these guys, <laughs> try something for me like Winter Wonderland, so you're prepared when it comes to state. Yep. Districts, this is the need to try it. Yep. Just be a little adventurous, because find out what you really like. Mm -hmm. It's good to go for the others, a big, big one. Yeah. I mean, I would, I will tell you when I was training for Ironman, I would have, like I spent months every single training session trying to figure out my nutrition for race day. I would never try anything on race day. And things I tried, failed. I had awful training sessions. Like the worst, like thinking I'm not even gonna get home, right? <laughs> and um, feeling like I'm gonna throw up, you know, but it was, it was training, you know, and that's when you learn your lessons too. And so this coach is right. Okay, so now meat day nutrition. So this is really interesting to me because nobody wants to eat breakfast and parents come to swim meets with like, like we're going on a trip. Like they have so much food, like it's crazy to me because first of all, there's barely enough time to eat between your events, right? You got you have to start playing around with what you are eating or you've got swimmers that like this, Meets, oh my gosh, I'm in a swim meet. It means I get to eat everything. Like, it's a snack event, right? Where we're just like coolers and we're just going to eat and eat and eat and eat. You don't actually need that much food. Like, literally, you should be able to, besides your drink, pack, like, in this, right? Like, in this for your meat and have plenty of food. So, like, well, I mean, these are some examples, right, of great things even for morning practices. So the Target has these, but so does um, Costco. These are egg bites that are already egg cups, good and healthy. Um, they also have egg white ones. So these would be a great thing for after morning practice, right? And um, I don't believe in processed food. I don't like packaged food. So anything I'm showing you, it's me approved. <laughs> so it means that it's not crap, okay? So, um, or a lot of people like to have cheese and crackers. You know, so you can do cheese and crackers. Triscuits are a good option. Cheese, it's not so much. Like, let's get something with the hearty grain. This is that whole grain food. Um, and then these are nuts and cheese and like trail mix. Um, but honestly, like, if I were packing for one of my kids, I would be like, okay, he needs a banana. Uh, I'm a big fan of. Um, all natural beef sticks. So one of the companies that I order, I didn't have any at home because Ben ate them all, um, are the Chomps. And um, I order them in bulk. And that's a great source of protein because there's no sugar added. There's no um, sulfites added. So it's a good protein. So I would be like, okay, banana. He's probably going to eat two of those. Give him a chocolate milk. He'll have a Propel. He likes sauce. Well, no, I already gave him sausage. So I'll give him, oh, I'll give him applesauce. Applesauce is a good, easy to digest food in the meat. 
Um, we're, we're a big fan of the, the Sting Honey Stingers, which is um, kind of, it's a performance booth. Like people might actually use these while they're working out. Um, they're gummies. Um, it's something that my kids like. It, they're really sweetened with honey, so I'm fine with it. Like it's more of a natural sweetener. And they make the Stinger waffles too, which I think are a good journal of our choice. Um, and then I would probably give him some hummus with, that he can use with his cheese and crackers and maybe a granola bar. That'd be it. That's enough. I mean, he doesn't eat very much. He would eat maybe one of these things himself. But um, for all of you guys, you don't need the big cooler up in the stands, right? We're not, it, it's not that many hours. Um, okay. So that was my example of what to kind of eat in the meat. And the thing is, is that when you have back three events, right, Saturday, Think about when you get out of the water, that's when you need to feel like immediately. Like you need to feel right when you get out of the water, go over, drink something, maybe have like, like I said, an applesauce is a great thing. Um, and I also do a lot of, especially when I was training for big races, like I, I eat baby food packets because again, this is not about like, this is about what's portable and what my body needs to perform. Right? So again, I'm going back with baby food is premium gasoline for your Lamborghini. <laughs> right? I know it sounds funny, but that, I mean, it's an example. Um, and that's where I also get sweet potatoes on the go is in the baby food. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, she says right after your swim, that's right after your warm down. Yes. Not right after your event. Yes. Because you need to get in the water as fast as you can to clear the lactic acid and then right after you start. Yeah, that is, that is more important than getting the lactic acid out first. Agree. Totally agree. Um, now, in a lot of times, you don't have a lot of time in between. Um, so you you got to judge. You, that's where you have to judge. But again, kind of like that morning practice, that's not the fuel that's going to make you swim faster. Right? You That's already been done. Like, you did that last night and first thing in the morning. What you're eating during the day is to just make you not feel hungry. You can't replace your glycogen stores that fast. It won't work. Like, once you burn through them, like, you only have so many and it takes a while and meals to get through them. But your events are not long enough that you should be burning through them. You should be able to continue, right? Uh, okay, so now what? Because now this weekend is another whole picture, right? So congrats, you made it. You fueled yourself on Friday night. You woke up in the morning. You had an awesome breakfast. You swam amazing. And then you're like, and now I'm starving and I'm tired and I made finals. Like, that's, that's the goal, right? And so now what do I do? Like, what am I supposed to do in between those, out, those hours? Well, first of all, definitely do not go through the fast food. Definitely do not be going to... Anything except for something that's in your bag or at home. I don't no stopping at restaurants, right? Um, so this is the you. I want you to eat the same foods that we've been talking about, right? Same foods. Get get a protein. Get a complex carb. Get some veggies and fruit in. Get what you can get in as soon as you're warmed down and you leave, in before you start eating everything in sight. Because you know what happens. You get done with that meat and you're like, I'm so hungry. What's the closest thing to make me not feel hungry anymore? Okay, um, hydrate, 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 hydrate. Again, if you're not hydrated, that's when you're going to start cramping, right? So you have to keep the sodium down, keep hydrated, and if you can sleep or rest, great. Stay off your feet. Um, one of the tricks that we learned when we would go to far away meets that had a long gap in between prelims and finals, and maybe we worked at a hotel, like long gap, we would go see a movie with the kids. Um, because we could sit down and do nothing instead of sitting at a restaurant or trying to go somewhere, you know. Um, so when you're traveling for meets, that's always something that you can throw in the back of your mind of, we have five hours and we have nowhere to go. A movie theater, you can even sleep. <laughs> like, so, um, so that's that. The next thing is, okay, but this is multi-day meet. What do I do? Now I have to do it again tomorrow. Let's repeat, right? Like it's not, it's it, it it it's the exact same thing. 
So whatever you did on Friday night, that's what you're doing on Saturday night. Whatever you're doing on Thursday night, that's what you're doing on Friday night, right? Everything we talked about, about how you're gonna tackle a day where you have prelims and finals, you're gonna do it the next day. And it becomes a part of, and then you start going into training and you're like, okay, like I, I'm gonna do the same thing. And you just, it becomes a habit, right? So that's kind of um, <clears throat> the habits that we wanna create. Now, I am not saying that there isn't a place for fun food, right? At all, like that's life, it's fun. Like going out to a restaurant and whatever is your favorite food or Chick-fil-A or going and having, I don't know, you know, ice cream. There's a time and a place for that. And like, you know, I when I was training really hard for some big races, Sunday was always our day of rest. So Saturday night, we kind of always were like, okay, like, are we gonna have burgers tonight? Are we gonna have pizza tonight? Like, we don't have to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to go train. So I'm not ruining a training session because I'm choosing when to kind of have that fun meal, right? And on that note, like, it's really important in a mixed group here that I just, that I, that I touch base on the difference between guys and girls, right? Because one of the things that I see out of girl athletes more and more in teenage girls is that they don't want to eat because they don't want to eat carbs. They don't want to eat because they want to be skinny. They want to be, and, and, and it's a problem. And it was a problem all the way back when I was swimming in college. I used to get weighed in once a week by my coach and my body fat tested every week. It totally messed up my head, right? And, but you look at the Olympians, okay? So. Girls need muscles just like guys need muscles, right? So guys, we're eating to fuel your muscles. You wanna build muscles. Girls, we wanna do the same thing. Like, you don't, there aren't size zero girls on the blocks at the Olympics, right? That's not, I mean, we're looking for strong. We're looking for healthy. We're looking for solid. Like, you can be all those things and be healthy without being, you know, a zero. So I, I want you guys to look as food is good. Food is positive. It's important to eat, right? It's 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 healthy for you. Um, and, and guys too, there's guys who don't eat, right? And, and so I know that there's struggles on both sides, but you guys have to keep remembering that, um, I went to the wrong place. Um, lost my connection. That um, fuel is important. Um, Um, and that food is not bad, carbs are not evil, but like, let's try to eat the whole grains. Let's try to eat the sweet potatoes, the regular potatoes. Let's try not to eat the, you know, the potato chips and all that kind of, um, food that is not nutrient dense. Okay. Um, so kind of two things that I'll show you guys, especially parents who are here. Um, I got paid some stuff up here. Um, I am more than glad to work with any of you one-on-one -on -one if you guys want to learn more um, or if you guys just want to sign up for my um, my email. That's just a, an email that goes out that I can give you guys more information on a monthly basis. That's just, you know, service to the team and service to my swimmers and service to other teams that I've helped through the years. Um, I, I've been doing this with other teams for the past five, six years, um, wherever we kind of go, and wherever we kind of land, but we've landed now here for Good, so now I'm here. <laughs> so um, so you guys can scan that, fill out that form. Uh, you guys can, I can pull it back up if you guys want. Um, the other thing is, is that um, the, if you guys want an electronic version of this, all you have to do is also scan this QR code and I'll, uh, you guys all have printed out versions, but you guys can scan this. And all of you guys, like all of you swimmers sitting on the floor, First of all, I am here all three days this weekend, okay? You can take a screenshot of the picture of this if you want. If you have a question, text me. I need it. My name's Misty. I'm going to be here. Text me. Shoot me a picture of your breakfast. Shoot me a picture, all of you. I would love to see a text from every single one of you at one point this weekend, either asking me a question about what you've eaten or about what you should eat or about how you feel, okay? I, 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 I'm offering this to you guys as I want to help you. I want to see you guys swim good. I love swimmers. It's a lifestyle that I can't imagine not having in my life. And if you don't know what to eat and then you don't know what to do, text me. But the only thing I ask is that you tell me what your name is 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> so that I know. And, and and you could even tell me what squad you are on. I, you don't. I, I, you could tell me your gender at some point, or if I don't, if your name is one I can't guess, because I might give different advice because bodies work differently, right? Like, um, and then your question, or if you're proud of yourself, like if you wake up in the morning and you look at your breakfast and you're like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe I just ate that, and then you get the best time, like tell me that, like I want to know that I made a difference with you guys today, but I'm not going to make a difference unless you guys ask me questions. And I'm here to support you guys, okay? Um, and I pretty much went through most of the food that was up here. This was just a good array. Like I said, most of it was from Target this morning. So Target, Costco, Trader Joe's. That's kind of where I shop. Yes? So we have an issue of allergies and um, gluten intolerance. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is a replacement for a complex carbohydrate that is gluten-free, but he's allergic to oats? He's allergic to eggs and he's allergic to peanuts. Okay. So some of your best yep. foods yep. are for yeah. So sweet potatoes. Okay. <laughs> so I am a huge fan of sweet potatoes. I think they are the super food. They're we eat them all the time. At, I mean, literally when I was training for Ironman, I was turning orange because I was paleo and I was grain free, nut free, dairy free the whole time. I'm not proposing that. Yeah. It's because of some of the way my body dealt with things. What about so, dairy? Is dairy okay? Is Dairy's fine. Okay. Yep. So, so another like protein, this? you can okay. use like plain Greek yogurt. So I would recommend like yogurt is good. Plain, plain, not sweetened. Plain Greek yogurt is better with berries in it to sweeten it with berries, right? Like, or even squirts and apple sausage, right? The main thing I want you guys, like, that's a whole other class, but the whole main thing I want you guys to focus on is you don't want to have anything that has sugar added into it. It doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't, it does not, it doesn't add anything for you. Yes. Oh, do you have any advice on how to, like, keep a nutritious diet when some things are hard to afford? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, first of all, it's grocery store, like where you're choosing to shop, right? That, that is a big thing. Um, and I mean, so you've got some of your produce and your meat is going to be cheaper at like Walmart than HEV. So that's one thing. But I will tell you, it is so much cheaper cooking at home than it is going out. And fruits and vegetables and meats are not that expensive. The packaged stuff is absolutely expensive and it is yes. not necessary at all to achieve a good diet. Yeah. Yep. You got any good recipes for homemade protein balls? I do. Okay, so if you guys want that, again, just well, either of these QR codes will give me your email address. So like it just it, it'll either of these QR codes will get you onto my email distribution, and I will take a couple recommendations and I will send them out tomorrow. So protein balls. What else do you guys want to see? Your favorite sweet potato recipe. Okay. Yeah. Like, I might actually eat the marshmallows. <laughs> so I would avoid the marshmallows. So, so would you be surprised? Cinnamon and coconut oil together with sweet potatoes and add some pecans, like it's like you're eating dessert. Like literally, like that's probably one of my favorite sweet potato recipes for the kids. Um, and again, a decent breakfast is you just mash up sweet potatoes, a half a sweet potato, mix in some coconut oil. So you got your healthy fat, you got your complex carb, and then mash and then add some pecans or something, and add a little cinnamon, and it's delicious. Yeah, and then make sure you have like some protein inside. Okay, yeah. Um, so, like, if you don't like vegetables, could you, <laughs> could you take, like, multivitamins or a pill to replace the, the, the vitamins that you give yeah. them? So, you, you're going to have to there's a place for supplementation, which is, I, I have a lot of information on that, but that's if we end up, I work I, I work one on one with any of you. I won't go into any supplementation. Um, there are definitely greens, power greens, that you can buy and you can take. Um, that are better than not eating vegetables, but your best source is always going to be to eat vegetables. So I have worked a lot of clients through the years who say they don't like vegetables. And I'm like, well, what, what kind of vegetables do you have? And most of the time they're kind of like, well, I have steamed broccoli or I have canned green beans or I'm like, okay, like you've got to learn how to remake your vegetables. So we roast all of our vegetables. So we do a pan of like 
carrots and Brussels sprouts and peppers and green beans and, and we huge thing and we roast them in olive oil and salt and pepper and that seems to make them kind of a, just a different texture. Sometimes it's a texture thing. And what I will say is if you cut the other bad stuff out and you start eating vegetables, you're going to start liking them and you're going to start craving them. Promise. Okay. You. So by adding the fruit to your water, it's a great way to make your water taste better so that you want to drink more of it. Yep, it's, it, it's a great way to do it. Yep. Uh, what about, how would you handle nutrition in places you can't cook, like if you moved into a dorm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, it's, it, it, it's, it's super tricky. So, I mean, I remember my coach, so my freshman year I swam at UNLV, and I remember my coach like literally brought us down to the chow hall, and she was like, don't eat pizza, don't eat hamburgers. There was an In-N-Out burger like right next to it. She's like, and you're not allowed to go there. Like that was all we got. And then like, but then you're like weighing us every week and you're taking our body fat. So there are definitely, the, some of these portable foods are huge. I would recommend if you're in the dorm, I mean, it's nice depending on what the rules are, right? There's always, if you have to eat in a, a, a um, cafeteria, eggs are always an option. Uh, just experience in the last five, ten years, the universities have gotten way better, yeah. especially if you're on any type of athletic. You're just on the team. You have access to usually the, the athlete, mm -hmm. don't have food, um, as well as their nutritionist, their um, their morning breakfast bars type yep. stuff. It's, it's just huge Jeez. in the last like five, ten years. Yeah. And so they're looking out for the athletes way more than they were ten years ago. Yeah. So your options have gotten way better. And mine was like 20 years ago, so, <laughs> so it was a lot, a lot longer. So there was still no special. So, yeah, and being on college, sorry, being on college campus recently, most of them have like healthy options even in the cafeteria. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we used to travel a lot and have to eat breakfast in a hotel, <laughs> like have hotel breakfast. We did a really good job. Like there's usually eggs, there's usually some oats, there's usually fruit. I'm, not, I'm also, I'm okay with bacon. Like we eat bacon, we eat bacon almost every day in our house because it's not, it's not bad. Like there's certain myths that certain foods are bad, right? And, and they're not. Um, so there's a way to do it. When you start learning how to do it at home, you're gonna start thinking about what you're looking for. And then you're gonna start craving those foods and know they're better for you and then you're gonna realize they're there and then you're gonna walk past the pizza. More questions? I saw more hands a minute ago. Nope. Okay, so I'm gonna send out, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, I had another question. Yeah. You said bacon, is, you don't think bacon's bad for you. Is that for greasy foods in general, or is it just No. <laughs> so, in general, like, I, and I, I mean, I should be like, I, we eat very high quality bacon that doesn't have sugar added to it, and like, all food is not created equal. Fried food is not good for you, right? Go, you, are you asking a question or do you want to just answer? It. How do you cook your bacon? Pan I bake it. Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. So the way I make my bacon, parents, right? Like we put our bacon on a like on a rack, and then all the bacon grease drops below it, and then it crisps up. So and again, I'm not saying eat bacon every day. <laughs> like we're gonna all there be like. This is, she said to eat bacon every day, and I'm not, you know, it's all about finding what works for you. Um, so, yes. Uh, and you also just said fried foods aren't good for you. What about air fried foods? So, again, like, so if you have an air fryer, that's awesome. Like, I, you're talking about what to take to college, an air fryer, like, I have an Instant Pot air fryer lid, the whole thing. You can make everything in there. Like, you can make eggs, you can make everything. So air fryer is fine. Like, you're not deep frying it in grease. Right, so in an air fryer is a fantastic way to make vegetables quickly too. Like if you have like I have an air fryer, I can put like two chicken breasts and like two cups of broccoli and a little bit of olive oil, turn the lid on, and like ten minutes have a meal. So um, that's I mean that's an air fryer is a great tool. Could you do like the same like how you said you thought about like baking the bacon? Could you do that with turkey bacon? Yeah, and that's even it's even healthier. Like. <laughs> If, again, but it's also quality. Like, I mean, quality, the quality of your food is important. Okay. Yes. So 
So when you, you said when you're traveling, you could go eat a health, hotel food. What if your hotel food doesn't serve breakfast until like 8 and you can eat at 7? Yep. So totally been there, right? So if you don't have a, if you have a refrigerator, there's things that you can get and there's things that you can do. So like most of the time, like these little oatmeal cups, um, this is a protein oatmeal and all you need to do is put hot water in it and you can put hot water, um, you can get hot water. Most, most um, hotel rooms have hot water to just pour it in. When I was running marathons, I used to always do oatmeal with one of these, and then I would have hard-boiled eggs in my cooler, and that would be my pre-marathon food. Um, and so when you're traveling, one of the best things that you can learn and you can teach your parents is that the best fast food restaurant when you're traveling is the grocery store, right? So it's the best place that you can do. Like you, you just, I, I'm hungry, I need lunch. You literally go park at a grocery store, you walk in, you buy a package of like good quality lunch meat, you grab some whole wheat bread, you grab some fruit, you grab a yogurt, and you grab a drink, and you had lunch, and you spend half the money, quarter of the money, and you're eating something healthy. Um, and you know, are you getting a hot meal? Some places might have a hot meal. I mean, look at HEB. Like you're talking about staying in a hotel, maybe you have to eat dinner in a hotel. HEB has those great, some of those great, um, ready-made meals up front that have a vegetable and a protein and a carb in them that are pretty high quality meals that I would approve. Uh, so, yes? So like, if you're arguing about like, places, but like, are like, the videos, like, it's like, segmented, like, determine what gets put on Yeah, so a couple of good fast food restaurants, um, and this is another thing that I do with people one-on-one -on -one is I'll like go through specific fast food restaurants and educate them on how to eat. So Subway's great, great option, right? You can get a bowl, you can get a salad, but their breads are great. You can get the whole wheat bread. You can, you know, keep off, you can choose good quality turkey or chicken breast. That's what I usually get, or ham. Um, so Subway's a great option for when you're out traveling. Um, Chipotle is actually another really good option that I, approve of is now they actually have cauliflower rice and you probably wouldn't even be able to tell it's cauliflower so try it okay um so where i will get a bowl with cauliflower rice and i the i think it's the pork carnitas that i think it's i don't know i think it's the pork but that's one that um when i was being very very strict there's no like extra oils in it there's no added sugar to it it's a really good clean um so those are both good places to go to, um, and let's see. Yes. Yep. Other questions? Yes. Are tortilla chips okay, or would you recommend one from those as well? So in general, I would not have tortilla chips as my fuel, right? So it's not like the food that I'm eating because I need to fuel my body. Right? But I'm realistic, like, I mean, tortilla chips are good, they're corn, they're gluten-free, they're, you know, the HB ones are really good, you're getting salt, but they have a lot of sodium in them. And I know tortilla chips for me, just corn in general, like, I don't do well with it, and my performance is down the next day. Like, um, but the, again, I'm not saying no to any foods. I'm not saying you guys can't eat a bag of potato chips, right? Like, I'm not saying that you guys, that you have to cut them out of your lifestyle, what I'm saying is that I want you to focus on putting the proteins in your body, putting the fruits in your body, putting the veggies in your body. When you come home from practice and you've already eaten dinner and you're doing homework and you're tired and that's when you want to eat the tortilla chips because I'm tired, I need salt, I need something to do. Like, you need to question yourself, why am I hungry? Like, am I hungry or am I bored? And if I'm hungry, then I probably should go get something that's nutrient dense and drink a big glass of water. And then after I do those two things, you know, first drink a big glass of water, then maybe eat a piece of fruit, especially at night, right? Like after you've had your meal. And then if you're like, you know what? I'm still kind of hungry. I like some chips. Fine. Like that's fine. Like you've kind of filled the gaps, but just make sure you're not going to it out of boredom to fill that gap. Or you think you're going to start eating because it's going to fill you up because they will never fill you up. Like you'll, that food, that I always call it no breaks food. 
There's certain foods that I can't even touch because if I start eating them, like I have no breaks, I'll eat the whole bag. Or if you do it, make purple, make bowl and say, this is how many I'm gonna eat. But don't take the bag or the box and sit down <laughs> while you're doing homework, walking around the house, in your car. Like that's mindless eating and you're not necessarily filling your nutrition gap. But you're starving, right? So you guys like, I get that you're so hungry that you want these things in your car, but I promise you, if you start doing some of these strategies, you will, you won't be so hungry all the time. I remember what it feels like to be that hungry, or it doesn't matter, you just wanna, I mean, like put all of this in, like can I, how fast can I get it in my body because I'm so starving, right? That starts settling down when you start doing the right things all day long, day after day. Other questions? Yes. So is it smart to eat big meals or eat small meals? So, there's lots of strategies on that, right? And I've kind of been in the mindset of both. Um, I find that, especially with um, younger athletes, I think they need to eat more often. I don't think that they can eat three meals a day, three big meals a day, and get everything that they need. You're, you guys aren't eating a thousand calories at breakfast, a thousand calories at lunch, and a thousand calories at dinner, right? Like, especially you guys, who are swimming double practices and training at a really high level, like you're there's it's so you can't consume that many calories in a meal. You'd be so full, right? So that's why you guys need to fill the gap with snacking. And you also need to add your healthy fats because your healthy fats, like nuts, like almond butter, putting coconut oil in your egg, like when you're making your eggs, olive oil, like you guys have to, avocados, like avocado toast, awesome. Have avocado toast with, um, or avocado like tortilla with, um, just for a snack. And that's what my kids do. They just take avocado and put it on a tortilla and eat it. Um, and that, that healthy fat will really help you not feel like ravenous all the time. But yeah, you guys are gonna have to snack. Like plan, plan ahead. You guys can't be walking out the door in the morning with no food in your bags. Most of you guys go to swim practice, school, and to swim practice. And you guys, like, you have to have, you have to plan ahead. Planning is the only way that you're going to, with nutrition is the only way your nutrition is going to make you faster. So parents, we need to help them. We need to have it in the house. We need to have, you know, meal prep times on Sundays that we're like, here's your lunch for the week. You know, and it might be, again, you don't have to eat cold chicken sweet potatoes, but it worked really fine. So <laughs> more questions? Okay, well I really hope that I get some texts. Okay. And again I will if you, if anybody wants to be part of the um the email that I send out, I'll throw a couple areas up here where you guys can send in this QR code and I'll send protein ball recipes out tomorrow and um, um, yeah so I'll do a protein and I'll do a sweet potato and I'll do like a dinner recipe. And then we're here if anybody has questions. Oh, yeah, I think we need to take a picture of that. Oh, please do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you put 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 you